Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Trek Zone Spotlight. Matt Miller with you. Joining me today is Mr. Ray Tessie from Starship Republic. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Matt, it's great to be here. I uh, wish it was later in the day, but it's really good to be here. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. Look, we uh, we have been communicating via Facebook Messenger and uh, we pre-recorded a podcast uh, in yeah. my series of fan films done right, but some major news has uh, broken over the last 12 hours. Uh, tell us what that is. Well, uh, I uh, entered into an agreement uh, a couple of months ago and I've uh, taken over the sets that uh, were uh, Starship, uh, Starships, were Star Trek Continues. Uh, and uh, we've rebranded it as Stage 9 Studios, uh, and uh, it contains all of the sets that uh, Continues had used to film their episodes. Well, it sounds absolutely fantastic, and I want to delve into it in just a little bit, but I don't want to completely dismiss uh, the original intention uh, of the documentary-style podcast that I was doing. Um, so yep. I want to ask a couple of those questions. The sure. first off of which is, what got you started in fan films? What got me started in fan films? Well, I've been a fan since uh, September 1966. Uh, and uh, I've always felt that I should have been a part of Star Trek, and I never was. And I happened to see something called Promenadicon, which was being held at Starbase Studios, which at that time was in Oklahoma City. And I thought I'd go for a visit. Um, and uh, I read a little bit more about them and I knew they were doing fan films down there, which I was familiar with through some of the fan films that were online. And uh, I have a buddy of mine uh, uh, by the name of Don Haran, who's been my friend for about 45 years. And uh, we did a lot of writing together. And we decided, why not give it a shot? Why not go down there and make a pitch and see if we could get some interest in uh, something we wanted to put together. We took an old story we had, we rewrote it, called it Starship Republic. They liked it. Uh, I went to the sets. Um, I completely geeked out when I walked in. Just, you know, I had to sit in the chair, I had to sit in the big seat and take my picture and all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, uh, we just kind of took off from there. I, so what got me involved was just, I guess, my love of Star Trek and the fact that I really felt that I had something that maybe, you know, I could contribute to the series. Well, Starship Republic was released a year ago. How was that experience for you, being, being such a fan uh, and then having to commit to, to creating the, 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 uh, your own fan film? Uh, what was that experience like compared to your expectations? Uh, well, I, was, I had no expectations because I didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was quite a different experience. Uh, a lot of things went right, a lot of things went wrong. Uh, I had no idea. Uh, the time involved uh, behind the camera uh, was a lot more excruciating than I thought it was going to be. Uh, in the final analysis, I really thought that we did a really good job of bringing something a little bit different to light uh, or to life. Um, but um, overall, uh, to me, it was sort of like a dream come true because I've always wanted to be behind the camera. I used to make little films with my grandfather's Kodak 8mm video camera. And this is something I always wanted to do. And at least at that point, I had a chance to, to do it. And the crew I had, which I assembled, I didn't really know any of them when I started. Uh, just took over and they did an outstanding job of acting, they did an outstanding job of uh, filming, of editing, of scoring, uh, it was wonderful. So overall, and, we're, we're, and hopefully you'll touch on it, we're planning on getting in, in front of the camera again uh, and trying to do the big version, but uh, it was a wonderful experience all around. Well, Ray, I want to ask you, there was a post uh, during the crowdfunding campaign uh, for Starship Republic. There was a post there where there was a bit of misinformation in regards to uh, CBS um, blessing, I, I guess it was. Can you, would you mind elaborating a little bit on, on what happened there? Uh, sure. Uh, basically, uh, you know, I foam at the mouth when I get information. But uh, the, the true story is that um, when I, when I launched the crowdfunding campaign, uh, the, the guidelines had just come out from CBS. 
And all of the people who I was really relying on to help me promote it all backed away. Uh, they were afraid that what I was doing, because I was the first fan film out, especially trying to get money, uh, since the guidelines came out, that maybe there would be some backlash on their part from CBS. I'm being as honest as I can. Um, and so um, I decided, I remember being very depressed because nobody was, was, was behind me at that point. And I said, if I'm going to go down in flames, I'm going to hear it from CBS. So I did some research. I thought I found, you know, John Van Sitter's email address at CBS. He had really been the voice of, of fan films and what was going on with the guidelines. And I didn't know if I had the right address. I didn't know if he'd get it. I didn't know if he'd open it. I didn't know if he'd read it. But I took a shot. And within a couple of hours, John wrote me back. And basically he said, in all honesty, he said, we don't see anything wrong in what you're doing. Uh, and I took that and I basically shoved it up everybody's nose and I said, okay, this, you know, just get me out there now. And in my zeal to get that answer, I said, CBS, I think I said, CBS is endorsing Starship Republic. And at about 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday, I got an email from John and he said, I didn't say that. And so in all honesty, I had jumped the gun. I had gone too far over my bounds and I issued an, a retraction and I, I basically apologized. I said, uh, you know, I, I, I really, um, I really, uh, you know, overstepped my bounds and uh, this is what was said and this is how I'm going to proceed. And I think everything after that was was just fine. But that's where that all stemmed from. I do want to just uh, delve into it just a little bit more because I believe that um, I, I've done some research over the last few days and a couple of my sources and even even the post back then that there was a lot of there was there wasn't a hundred percent support behind you with, with the post in, in saying that CBS was endorsing you um, do, how was how did how did you feel that um, that this was all coming about? As you're saying, you, you felt like your back was against the wall here with j the guidelines just coming out. Um, how did you how did you feel and react to to people basically still calling you out uh, for for saying that CBS was in, was endorsing Starship Republic? Well, uh, obviously, I made a retraction because again, I, I I said that, and obviously, I had to say, look, that's not really what was said. Here's my experience in life, uh, if I can, Matt. Okay, uh, you're never gonna you you're never gonna please everybody. Okay, and that's okay. Uh, I had a lot of people who understood where I was coming from and accepted my apology, and I had a lot of people who gave me backlash. There was a lot of other things going on at the time as well. There was the whole Axenar situation, and that had really split um, uh, the Star Trek audience. Um, and I found, uh, first of all, I have to say, I, I have the ultimate respect for CBS. Uh, it's their property. And it doesn't matter what anybody says or what anybody thinks. It's their property. And they can choose to do with it as they do. And they turned a blind eye for many years. And, and frankly, what they did was not terrible with the, with the guidelines. And they are guidelines. They're not rules. But look, if they say you can crowdfund up to $50,000 for a 15 minute movie, geez, I can do a lot of things with $50,000, you know? Uh, so I, I had no issue with CBS. Um, uh, hopefully they had no issue with me. Um, but I, you can't please everybody, period. Uh, and if people are going to call me out, they're going to call me out. And uh, I learned a long time ago through a person who helped me launch, a young lady who helped me launch uh, Republic that you look at all the comments and you can thank people who have given you positive comments and ignore the people who have given you negative comments because it doesn't really pay to get into a discussion about that. It's either gonna go away or they're never gonna change their opinion, but it's gonna be what it's gonna be. And it's that philosophy has kind of served me well. 
I do have to just follow up again, Ray, because because I wonder it did take you a few days to to issue the react, retraction, and and as I understand it, it actually took John's email um, to get you to issue that retraction, despite um, the public comments from other fan film producers. Is that sort of where your mindset was at with that that these people were just were were not liking you for being the first, I, almost the first or, or the first uh, after these guidelines were released? Uh, to try and make a fan film? I never approached it that way. I never thought it that way. Uh, I, I, I listen, in all honesty, nobody spoke to me about it uh, uh, from from those people who were either positive or negative. It was only, you know, by way of people making comments on websites and Facebook pages and wherever it was going to be. Uh, yeah, it did take, you know, I, I didn't realize that I had overstepped my bounds. I was very excited about the fact that, you know, I was able to finally promote it. Um, I'm not quite sure what your question is, Matt, but... Um, uh, I guess I, what I, I'm I, just trying to get at is is just just the fact that there's been a lot of lot of feedback and and obviously you're you're in the news today in in the Star Trek uh, fan circles and and admittedly that's not all of Star Trek fandom but but the groups that that look at fan films and and uh, and enjoy fan films or critique fan films or whatever people want to call it Axana haters the you know all those sort of people not not even just Axana haters but uh, and and not haters that's that's a very bad word for it it's it's uh, um, you know, critics, uh, but it, it, it has been the fact that that it, it took um, John a follow-up email to get you to issue that re to issue that retraction uh, at such a very sensitive time. Uh, I don't want to get stuck on this because it, it is in the past. It's it's 12 months ago. Uh, I, I guess I just want to finish finish that section off by by asking uh, if you regret jumping the gun and, and saying that CBS in, endorsed Starship Republic? Well, of course I, I regret that because it was a gut reaction on my part. Um, basically, uh, where nobody would support me, you know, I finally had some relief. And, I, and yeah, I jumped the gun. There's no question about it. And do I regret it? Absolutely. If I could have done it differently, I probably would have. And in fact, the fact that I was, I believe, big enough to issue a retraction, whether or not I got positive comments or reactions from that or negative comments from, from that, uh, I just felt that that was the right thing to do. And I'd do it again. I, not, I wouldn't make the statement again, but if I did something wrong, uh, I would, uh, I'd own up to it. I've done that all my life, and I don't think that's ever going to change uh, as a mindset, as a mindset for me. Alrighty, well let, let's move on and jump into the present day. Uh, the news, as I said, as, as we've said, is has broken that, that you've secured the Star Trek Continue sets. Uh, what what inspired you to uh, to reach out to Vic and, and put a proposal to it? Well, there's an odd set of circumstances behind that. Uh, at the time, um, I was working with the guys at Starbase Studios, and as most people know, you know they 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 they're having their issues. And right now, Starbase Studios, as it was, doesn't exist. Uh, but there was a point where it looked like the studio people, the the folks involved, were going to resolve things and get things back together. And I came up with the idea. Well, I wonder what Vic is doing with his sets now that he's finished filming, and maybe we could, you know, acquire some of those sets and build up Starbase Studios. Uh, so I sent Vic uh, a, a message. Again, just one of those situations where I didn't know if I'd hear from him. I, I'd spoken to him and met him at cons over the years, and, you know, he was very magnanimous to me. And I said, what are you doing with the sets? And lo and behold, he wrote me back and he said, what do you have in mind? And I gave him a couple of ideas. Um, and uh, one was just leave the sets where they are, which is in Georgia. Um, but again, it was under the uh, idea that they would probably roll into Starbase Studios. But as he and I began talking, and we began talking, we started on email, and then we began talking. And frankly, we both had a love of Star Trek. and. Um, you know, he, uh, he invited me out to see the sets, and I looked at it, 
and we sort of reached an agreement the day that we met, and uh, I guess the rest is kind of history. Well, what are your plans for, for, for the studio? Right now, it's completely undetermined. Uh, there's a lot of due diligence to do. There's, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, things to consider. Um, and there's a lot of uh, options that could be explored, and I'm not going to jump into it. You could almost say I learned my lesson by the Starship Republic situation. Uh, certainly, there are a lot of possibilities, as Spock would probably say. Uh, but I'm not going to jump the gun. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to do anything without going through all of the proper channels and getting all the proper. Um, I don't want to say permissions, but but certainly to make sure that I'm doing things uh, by the book the right way. Uh, so yeah, I hope to do something. I hope to do something for the fans. I'm a fan. Uh, that's what brought me to Star Trek. There's there's loads of us out there. Um, and I'd like to do something for all of us uh, and, and you know, do something in a very good and positive way. But right now, until I really know what my bounds are, I really can't speak to what I'm going to do with the sets. It's certainly a big ask that um, t taking on board these sets uh, in, in the uh, continues uh, 501c3 application, we, we learned that it's co it was costing Vic about $5,000 a month to keep the studio going and, and basically to keep these fan films churning out. Is, is that uh, a cause for concern for you, the amount of money that this, this studio is going to need? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, and actually, you know, the dollars that are involved uh, are, are basically my concern, if I if you don't mind me saying that. Yes. Uh, if I didn't think if I didn't think that it was worth uh, going into, then I wouldn't have done it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, the president of the United States. Uh, so it was a, it was a, it was a, a, an undertaking that I really had to uh, think about quite a bit. Um, but all in all, if I'm in it, then the opportunity that presented itself was worthwhile. I, I agree there that, that the, the budgets are, are really no one's concern except your own. Uh, and, and I'm in that sort of position now as well. I'm just about to produce my own fan film with, with my own budget. I'm not crowdfunding or anything like that. Uh, and, and I think that if I was to ask you to, to categorically stipulate exactly how, you know, the money, how, how you're going to make the money to or, or have the money to, to afford this studio, then that sets a, a, a precedent, a, a double standard for me because I, I, I agree with you, Ray, that, that it, it really is no one else's business. Uh, where the money comes from, how the money, how your money, our money gets spent. Uh, it's, a, it's a hobby, it's a passion that we love doing and, and that's the whole reason that, that, that we do it. I think the biggest concern has been that, that James Curley has um, jumped online uh, and, is, and has expressed some, some uh, serious concern in regards to his exclusive licence up in uh, upstate New York uh, in regards to his um, original series set tour in the Fan Film Academy because there has been some conversation ag again and this all stems from Facebook but uh, that, that some people uh, that have commented on Trek Zone Spotlight videos in the past have said well you're being too hyper focused on one area. Um, um, but that is where our group congregates that watches these fan films and a lot of them are talking about free set tours and, and filming their fan films uh, out on your sets because it's a lot cheaper and less restrictive than, than James. How would you respond to, to those sort of people? The uh, same way I did originally, which is I don't really know how this is going to pan out. Uh, I did it because I loved it, period. Uh, if you would have told me when I was 12 years old in 1966 watching Star Trek that one day I'd own the Enterprise, I would have told you you were crazy. Uh, and you know what? If I can sit there and just sit on the bridge and do that, and that's as far as it goes, that's great. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. Um, whatever's being said about me, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it this way, if you don't mind me saying it, Matt. Uh, it's very disheartening. Uh, because all that means to me is that nobody knows me. Nobody's spoken to me. Nobody's asked me. You're one of the first people to ask me these questions, okay? And I'm very happy to answer them. But it means nobody knows who I am. 
okay? And if you don't know somebody, if you don't know who they are, then why don't you ask them first before you make a statement? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not in this for money. I'm not in this to make money. I'm All I wanna do is be able to keep the lights on. That's it. Um, beyond that, if people have a question, and, and you know what, I try to answer as many of the people that write in and give me congratulations, or people who write in and say, what's the deal? You know, I give them an honest answer, and it's the same answers I'm giving you. So, so again, my philosophy is, you know, thank the people who are positive and ignore the people who are negative. I just wonder, Ray, whether that's whether that's the best way. But I mean, it 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 very much is constrained to a Facebook group discussion uh, in in regards to this. And and once once you actually get started on on um, you know announcing plans and and what you're going to do and that sort of stuff obviously that there again will will silence uh, people and and the critics I, I, I'm a firm believer in action speaking louder than words uh, but I do just wonder whether whether maybe the horse has left the stable again w without the cart uh, in in terms of announcing that that you've got these sets which just sets people off into wild speculation um, when 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 can we hear from you uh, as to when you've decided what you're going to do <laughs> I guess as soon as I know exactly what I'm gonna do I, I, I'm not and I'm not trying to be you know close to the vest if I had something to tell you Matt I would tell you uh, but right now uh, I, I thought it was in in call it my best interest uh, that people knew that something was going to happen with those sets uh, there was a lot of speculation that they were going to be destroyed they were going to be dismantled it was something was going to happen to it um, and you know what as a fan two fans uh, hey, something's going to happen with these sets, whether it's what everybody expects, uh, whether nothing happens with those sets except that they live on where they are, uh, only time is going to tell. And if I had something to report, I would report it, but at the moment, I don't. Alrighty, well, one last hypothetical. If Starbase Studios does fold and, and, and the owners can't come to an agreement, uh, would you hope that you'd be able to be the new Starbase Studios at Stage 9? Uh, that is a loaded question. I think... I <laughs> hypothetically. Think, I'm more than happy to I, say I get, it, hypothetically. I get, it, I get that it's hypothetical, okay? Um, uh, I'm in this... I'm in this because I'm a fan, okay? I'm not in this for glory. I'm not in this for... I don't know what the word is, uh, domination, okay? I think that everybody, the, the philosophy of Star Trek, the spirit of Star Trek was that uh, it involves inclusion, uh, whether you wanna call it infinite diversity and infinite combinations, well, infinite's a big number, okay? I think there's room for everybody and everything, and I'm not trying to climb the ladder and I'm not trying to be the next big thing, okay? Some people are gonna say I'm the worst thing in the world since white bread, who knows? Um, but that's okay, uh, because I'm not in it for that, okay? And that's why maybe I just, uh, you know, I'm not worried about what people may say negatively or positively. It's very good for people to say, hey, congratulations. I hope something good comes out of this, because you know what? I'm happy that I have it, and I hope something good comes out of it. But, but uh, you know, uh, there's no reason that we can all coexist. There's no reason that we all can't get along. And uh, I'm, I'm not in it for that. Uh, if Starbase Studios folds, that's a shame. Um, and I would support those guys and I have been supporting those guys since I filmed Republic. Um, it'd be nice if they could just kind of come to terms uh, and open the studio again. And I would welcome it. I would welcome it. Right. Well that's absolutely fantastic and I wish you all the best uh, in, in the future with Stage 9. Uh, good luck with it all.
I appreciate it. And as soon as I know what's going on, you'll be probably the second to know because I'll be the first. <laughs> now, being the original owner of the sets, I reached out to Vic uh, to see if he would comment uh, on this upheaval that is happening on Facebook right now. Uh, and he replied to me and said that there weren't any caveats placed on Ray uh, during the sale process. What Ray chooses to do with the sets is entirely his decision. The only requirements in, in Vic's mind were that they remain intact and well cared for, and he's certain they will be. Now Vic agrees with the majority of Facebook posts out there which is seeing this as good news because he says that he knows that the beautiful beloved sets are in good hands. Uh, he's not going to comment regarding the future of them however since he doesn't own them any longer. I did ask Vic whether he thinks Stage 9 can exist in the same dimension as James Corley's exclusive license for the original series set tour and the Fan Film Academy. Uh, and he replied by saying that it exists, regardless of anyone or anything else, it always has. Vic closed out our very brief email chat by confirming that Ray purchased the sets and that he also believes Ray was the best candidate to take ownership because of his deep respect for what they've done with Star Trek Continues and his commitment to keep the sets where they were constructed. This is still a hot button issue and it is still developing even as you're watching this podcast, hopefully on the day it was released. Uh, if not, I'm sure there will be a link in the description with updated information. I hope Ray uh, will join me again on the Trek Zone Spotlight. Uh, uh, when he's got the plans for Stage 9 uh, all firmed up in his head. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Trek Zone Spotlight. The aim is to bring you more fresh content throughout 2018. I'm Matt Miller. Thanks for watching.